this evening as we begin our worship uh, service, I want us to stand as we read God's Word. First Peter chapter 5. First Peter chapter 5, starting in verse 6. The Bible says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time He may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on Him, because He cares for you. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of suffering are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. And after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Well, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you tell us in your word to cast our anxieties, our problems, our sorrows upon you, for you care for us. Lord, so often we read over verses like that and we forget the awesome God that you are and how much you love us. Lord, it's because of your love that we stand tonight. We know that it's because of your love that we have a Redeemer through Christ Jesus our Lord. And we have a reason to go out. And tell the world that we are Christians, that we have been redeemed, that we've been changed by your grace. And may we be faithful to do that. Lord, thank you for bringing us back into your house this evening. We pray that everything we do and say will bring honor and glory to the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. And it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right. Well, it's good to see everybody. Why don't you take a moment and greet your uh, neighbors and friends around you. Well, this evening it's our privilege to be able to share with you, uh, our church, the trip that we went on to Romania. And so at this time, I'm going to ask Brother Danny. Oh, okay. All right. So we have a uh, <laughs> we have a uh, video that we want to show, and then Brother Danny is going to come. So go ahead and roll the video.
coming and sharing this time with us. Um, I'm going to do something just a little bit different. Didn't, what you've seen here, does anybody have any questions about? We, we, we go and, and we work with children, and, and what I can tell you is three different villages. Uh, one of the villages called Monastur has no Christian church. It has an Orthodox church only. And uh, that was some of the largest number of children that we had. You know, that they came and, and were eager to hear. And what's so unique and what's so neat to me about this is we go with the intention of doing Bible school with children. But we wind up with six or eight or ten moms and dads standing around the edges. And so they hear the gospel as well. So it's not just children. Um, but, but God's blessed us with this. And, and we, we had such a... A really good time with it. Um, anybody got any questions? Yes, Miss Big. Uh, if they did, they probably still don't speak South Georgia. But, <laughs> but yes, ma'am, we we have. You, you come in. You come in contact with enough people that speak English. Um, English is one of the languages that they teach now in the Romanian schools. Uh, so we, we have the translators that work with us, the missionaries there. The, the, some of the pastors speak English as well. So uh, it's a lot easier for them to understand us than it is for us to understand them. Yes, ma'am. So, but it, listen, a, a smile and a hug is the same in any language. You know, so, um, anybody else? Yes, ma'am. They are doing well. Uh, I was, we were, you, you notice there we were up on a mountain. We went up this, it's an old castle up there. I don't really know much about it except to say that that's all that's left of it. And I was hoping that we wasn't going to go to another one because I didn't think that she needed to be going to another one after that, after, after driving up there. But it was, it was, she's doing well. They've got it marked the 30th of August on their calendar. Okay? It's going to be a sweet little boy. Not one of them mean girls. <laughs> uh, all right. Any, anybody else? Yes. That, if you notice, uh, we were in a... In a um, Apricot grows. Thank you, sir. Uh, but this gentleman was having a problem with people coming in and taking his apricots, so he fixed him a place to stay. And they'll stay out there at night with their, with their fruit, you know, with their groves. And, and uh, there was, uh, oh, there's, there's plums and apricots, and just it grows wild everywhere. Um, so, it, but uh, they had, they had, that family had uh, at, uh, Cornelius, Cindy, you, I know you remember him. Uh, his family has a, a, an apricot grove there and, and invited us to come back and share some of their fruit and then gave us more fruit when we were ready to leave. And um, we actually were able to get some honey from them and, and just really nice family. Uh, something that just has, has, spoken to me last year and this year. So many times we as churches in America, and I'm, and I'm glad that we can, I'm not complaining, we give out of our excess, our abundance. Those people give because they love you. They don't have excess. Um, yes, ma'am. Oh no, no, ma'am. You just you just let somebody spread the word that you're gonna be there. And in 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 one of the videos, I mean, in one of the slides, I don't know if you saw it or, or noticed it or not, but those children were soaking wet. They came in a pouring down rain, and Mama and Daddy is not dropping them off. They walking. Word of mouth. 
word of mouth. That they, that, that it'll, you can tell one child and, and, and give, him, give him a handful of suckers and tell him to go through the village and tell everybody that, that, that the Bible club is coming tomorrow. And by the second day of the Bible club, you may have, the first day you may have 25, the second day you may have 50, the third day you may have 100. So it just it goes through the village just like that. There's this just it's just a if you could turn the clock back to the thirties and forties in the smaller villages, that's very much what it's like. You know, um, most of these children that you see here um, probably have running water and, and, and electricity in their homes. Um, some of them, I'm sure, I, I know, do not. They do not. And to get water, they probably, I'm guessing, I'm not a real good judge of distance, but they'll walk far from here to Pizza Hut and get water and carry it back in jugs. That's, they go to a community well. Um, so, and, and you notice a lot of the children, they have little sore places on their lips. Those are vitamin deficiencies. You know, because, it, it, and, you know, it's just, a, it's, a, it's, it's different and, and, and it's, it touches your heart. But, you know, there's, there's only, you can only, you can only do so much. Yes, ma'am. Uh-huh. Right. Um, I want to share that in just a few minutes. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. That is a that is a cash crop, I guess, like corn for them, and and they were they were in rare form, just as far as you can see, rolling. Nice big rolling hills with fields of sunflowers, and then and they're not they're they're this big sunflowers, huge big beautiful sunflowers. I, now that I don't know, I, I just know I'm sure they do. Uh, a lot of the a lot of the world corporations that we know in America are now beginning to in, enter into the European nations and and. Romania and that sort of Cargill is one Smithfield Farms uh, is another you know so they're beginning to do chicken and pork produce producing areas and as well as a lot of agriculture they've always raised corn and and sunflowers but uh, they got some of the most beautiful flowers growing and it, it, it any, anywhere, anywhere that you want to look, there's somebody's got flowers growing, and and, and they're just be they're beautiful. Uh, the government, it's not they're 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 receptive. They're, we 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 don't have a problem most of the time. As Jeff and Anna said last year, they were doing when they first went to this village of Monastour and did a Bible club, the Orthodox priest came and called the police. And the police from Venga came down and stood around and watched them do the Bible club for a little while and finally told the priest to go home. He had better things to do than babysit. So, you know, that's pretty much the... If, if we get any kind of verbal opposition or anything, it's usually from an Orthodox priest. They don't like you being there. Um, something I was going to say, and I forgot what. Come on up, Anna Marie. She told, she asked me not to not to keep her up here very long, so I won't keep her over about thirty minutes. So. <laughs> let's let's sit down. Let's I want to get. Uh, okay. I want to get Anna Marie to tell us what she liked best about this trip. Getting to tell a good 
answer about God. And tell us what you maybe like the least, what you didn't like about the trip. Not being able to understand what people were saying. Okay. Um, did you enjoy the food? A little bit. A little bit? <laughs> well, well, that's all right because me and your daddy enjoyed it a lot. <laughs> did you have a favorite food? Um, probably the soup they had there. Well, I appreciate it, and thank you for sharing. With anything else that you'd like to tell us about, about your trip? Maybe anything that God spoke to you about while you were on this trip? No, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> There's something that I would like to tell you about this young lady. Um, <clears throat> she travels really well. You know, I don't travel that good. When we, when we were ready to come home, um, Thursday morning, it was 2 o'clock in Romania, roughly 7 o'clock Wednesday night here. 31 hours later, we got home. She ain't complained a word. She's always ready. She's always ready to go when we, were, when we needed to go, you know, just the best traveling partner that you could ask for, I'm telling you. So, y'all should be proud. I do have another short video that I'd like for you to, to, to see. And uh, I want to just, I want to say thank you uh, to, to everybody for, for making this possible. Um, a lot of times, you know, we have ideas that what we want to do for, for the Lord, we want, to, we, want to, we want to do something major that's going to make a huge impact, you know? Well, if you baked goods for our bake sales, or if you purchased those, any of those goods, or if you uh, donated privately or... or uh, through Bible school funds, we, we, we thank you. We, we, we could not have done this without your help. Um, and what we would like to say is that if you prayed for us, we appreciate it. We thank you. And if you just offered a word of encouragement, let me, let me just tell you. In God's world, there are no small parts. Everything is God-sized. When we, when we, when we do the best that we can to honor God. Um, everything is God-sized. And so we thank you for your help. We thank you for sharing with us your love and your encouragement. And uh, what you're going to see on this next little video, it's about five minutes or so, um, the, uh, a, a home here that did not have a roof on it last year. This is the home that we talked about last year and put a roof on last year. The children that came from that home uh, were at Bible Club today. And before they could get back tomorrow, one of them was hit by a car. Um, by the grace of God, she suffered no serious injuries. Um, but it, the, the mother is very distraught in this in this video, and it's, and rightfully so. But it's one of the families that we also shared food with. Earlier in the spring, we had an opportunity to to give, and and uh, I think Jeff and Anna shared food with uh, six or seven families then. And when we went this time, we had an opportunity that we shared food with six more families. And so you'll see most of those families here in this in this video. Uh, and when I say we shared food, it's basic needs. It's basic needs. Flour, sugar, pasta, um, bread, oil, that sort of stuff. You know, it's not, it's not, like, we go, not like we go to the... Because they don't have a refrigerator, okay? They don't have electricity for a refrigerator. If they did, they can't afford to pay the electric bill, so they don't have it. Um... The second house that you'll see here is the house this year. Thank you, Cindy, to, and the Bible school donation, everybody that donated to that. There's going to be a roof put on this house this year. 
Um, but what you're going to see is a building that doesn't have any walls either because they took down part of the walls to, to wall up the windows and the doors to keep out the cold air. The stove is in part of the, the house that doesn't have a roof on it. And it's when I say a stove now, it's a two-burner gas hot plate. That's their, that's their cooking stove. Um, it's a mother and four children. The oldest child is 12. She takes care of the others. Living in an eight-by-eight eight room. That's it. There's no indoor plumbing. There's no water. There's no electricity. An eight-by-eight eight room. And so this is, this is home. But this is what... When, when we're here, and a lot of times we wonder what it is that Jeff and Anna are doing when nobody's there with them, this is the sort of stuff they do. They do this after-school program. This young lady that lives in this house comes to this after-school program to, to, to try to learn how to read and write. She's 12 and doesn't know how to read and write. So these are the things that they do when nobody else is around. Um, there's a young man in this video also. His name is Alex. Do you remember what his, where, why he was, he was not living, his parents didn't, don't have him. He's living with his grandparents, 12, 12, 13 years old. He's bigger than the other kids. He's not, he's, he's what we call a normal size 12 or 13 year old, but he's bigger than the other children his age and so he fits in well with the older boys and their bad influence on him. His grandmother and grandfather are trying to raise him in a Christian home. And while we were there, we went by and shared food with them. The next day, our translator, no, I'm sorry, the pastor's daughter-in-law told us that she had talked with Alex's grandmother. And that just a day or two before, Alex knew that their, I guess what we would call Social Security check, their retirement check, came in the mail. So he asked if he could have a little money to go to the store and get him a snack, some, you know, some little treat. And she said, I'm sorry, but we don't have the money. We have to pay our bills, and after we pay our bills, I'm not sure that we have enough money to even buy food. But we're going to trust God, and He's going to provide for our need. The next day, we showed up with food. Alex went back to his grandmother and said, I see what you're talking about now. So, it, 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 it all works in God's plan. You know, we, we, just, we just happen to be a part of God's plan and, and, and he's able to use us to, to fit into his plan. But, uh, again, I thank you for all that you've done for us in this, in this ministry. And, and for this year especially, we were able to do quite a bit with, with the food and, and, and the roof on the house. Matter of fact, it's not going to just be a roof on the house. It's going to have to be some walls on that house as well. So... Uh, Brother Ronnie, if you'll run that video, and, and then Brother Michael will finish up the service. Thank you. was battered and scarred in the auctioneer, thought it scarcely worth his while to waste much time on the old violin, but he held it up with a smile. What am I bid, good folks, he cried, who'll start the bidding for me? A dollar, 
A dollar then two, only two, who make it three? Going for three, but no, from the room far back, a gray-haired man came forward and picked up the bow. Then wiping the dust from the old violin and tightening the loosening strings, he played a melody that was pure and sweet as the carolin angel sings. The music ceased, and the auctioneer, with a voice that was quiet and low, Now what am I bid for the old violin? And he held it up with the bow. A thousand dollars, who make it two? Two thousand, who make it three? Three thousand once, three thousand twice, and going, and gone, cried he. The people cheered, but some of them cried. We don't understand. What changed its worth? Came the quick reply. The touch of the master's hand. And many a man with life out of tune and battered and scarred with sin is auctioned cheap to a thoughtless crowd, much like the old violin. A mess of pottage, a glass of wine, a game, and he travels on. He's going once, he's going twice. He's going and almost gone. But then the master comes, and the foolish crowd can never quite understand the worth of a soul and the change that's brought by the touch of the master's hand. If I can have somebody. As I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a word or a song, if I can show somebody for their traveling around, then my lady. Danny, you made me come and speak after that part. Um, very, very humbling. Um, I want to, first of all, so I thank you to Brother Ronnie uh, for helping to get the slideshow presentation together. So thank you so much 
for your hard uh, work with that. Um, I just want to say thank you to a couple different um, people. First of all, I want to uh, take this opportunity to thank um, Shell for supporting me and Anna Marie be able to uh, go the whole time. She she never one time insisted that that she go, and she prayed and. Uh, the whole time we were flying over, apparently she found some kind of app and she traced. She was <laughs> she was watching us the whole time and uh, prayed for us. And, and then on the way back when we got delayed, Anna Marie insisted that when we were in uh, Germany, it was about, I believe it was about 9 o'clock in the morning there, which would have made it about 2, 3 o'clock in the morning here. Anna Marie insisted that we get on FaceTime and FaceTime Michelle. And there was Michelle. She was, uh, so thank you, Michelle, for supporting us and encouraging uh, us. Also, I want to thank the church. Thank you so much for allowing us to go and praying for us. So many, even today, continue to ask about the uh, trip. And uh, so thank you so much for allowing us uh, to go. And then also, I want to thank Anna Marie for being such a trooper. Um, and, and I know that Brother Danny can vouch for me when I say this. I mean, the minute we walked into the door when we stepped into Romania, uh, little Coleman was on her like white on rice and uh, stayed on her the, the whole time. And bless her heart, she never one time complained. And so thank you, Anna Marie. It was a, it was a, it was a true joy uh, to be able to go on a trip, a mission trip uh, with, my, with my daughter. Um, just a couple things that happened on the trip that I wanted to share with you. First of all, one of the things that we encountered was in one particular village that was in the, the, the village of Monastor. Um, there, was a, there was so much bondage, spiritual bondage, and really there's, there's bondage in the whole country. Back in 89, 1989, they had the revolution. They were a communist uh, country, and there was actually a grassroots movement that started at a church, and uh, they revolted and came out from underneath that that communist regime. And the, the predominant religion in Romania during the communist days and even today is the Orthodox religion. It's a, it's a religion that is very, very similar to the Roman uh, Catholic faith. It's what you would find in Russia and in most of Eastern Europe. And uh, I, could, I could really relate to that, being that I was raised uh, Catholic, and so many times when we, we had one particular day that we went out to the villages and we just shared uh, the gospel with people. And one of, the, one of the, the, the remarks that we got quite often was when we talked to people about knowing if they had a home in heaven, if they, know they, if they knew they had a relationship with God. They would always say, well, nobody can know for sure. Only God knows. And they were held in that bondage. And, of course, we were able to share with them that uh, the Word, Prashan 5.13, tells us that these things has he, He's written to us so that we may know. And one particular gentleman really just touched my heart. Uh, we went to his house, and he was an older gentleman, and you could just see fear on his face. And he just lived in this little, this little home, and he stayed there literally pretty much all the time, and he was in complete fear because a year prior he had shared... Uh, that there was a group of teenage boys that had assaulted him and took from him what would equate to about a thousand dollars American dollars, and so because of that, he was just held in the bondage of fear. And uh, so we were able to share the gospel uh, with him. Um, but in this, in the village of Monastor, you could just sense that there was a a spiritual bondage in that uh, village. The the Orthodox religion has a has a deep grip on that uh, village. And as Brother Danny said, um, apparently they had tried to have a, a Bible club earlier and the priest of the village didn't like it, uh, simply because he, was, he saw that as he was losing his, his control. Kind of makes you think of the Pharisees in the, uh, in the Bible. And while we were there, there was this one man, um, and we joked because he, he looked a lot like Sammy Davis Jr., um, but he, he came into the, uh, it was like our first day there, and he came into the field where the children were at. We never could figure out if he had children there or not, but he was 
it was very apparent that he was very agitated that we were there. And then the next day, uh, it was my turn to teach the lesson, and it was the it was the gospel message. And he came walking past, and he was very, very agitated uh, to the point to where he, uh, Brother Danny had shared that when he got to the top of the hill, he began screaming out. Um, and so it was very obvious that there was a demonic uh, stronghold, uh, and he was manifesting himself through that um, um, man. And so, but we had the privilege of being able to share the gospel with those uh, with those people. Something else that really was was precious to me was their hospitality, as Brother Danny already shared. Very uh, hospitable people. Um, and this one particular lady, we went to her house, and she was Orthodox. She didn't know the Lord, um, but she immediately. I mean, she ran into her house. She got the chairs, she went and got the bottles of water and soda, and she brought it out on the table and laid it out before us, and they just treated you like you were kings and, and queens. And the, 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 uh, the little grove that we went to where we were picking the apricots, the, the young man was one of the translators, and his dad was the, the farmer of this apricot grove, and, and told us, I said, you know, we want you to pick as many apricots as you want. So we were we were picking apricots. And then we got done. They said, okay, now we want you to come to the house because we've already picked several boxes for you. And so, you know, that was just the way that they showed their uh, hospitality. One lady, this was kind of funny, uh, we were there in the, in the village of Vinga. We were teaching the children. And uh, it was on one of the afternoons we had finished, and she came up. I believe she, she may have talked to uh, you, Brother Danny. I can't remember. But she had a goat. In fact, the goat was in one of the pictures, and she had milked the goat, and she wanted us to have a, a uh, fresh container of that uh, goat's milk. Um, we, we took it, gratefully, <laughs> and we put it in the refrigerator for Jeff and Anna to enjoy. Uh, <laughs> uh, another kind of funny story, while we were there, Jeff was on this, uh, this diet, and um, we had gone to one of the deacons in the church at uh, Agresha Mare. He was a sheep farmer. And he wanted us to come out and see the sheep. And when we got there, they were milking the sheep. And so it's, it's, it's myself, Brother Danny. I don't think Anna Marie was there. Uh, Miss Velda was there and Jeff was there. And they're milking the sheep. And, you know, we're fascinated with how they're milking those sheep and everything. Well, then, uh, Brother Abram, he gets this pan, this little dish that looked like it hadn't been washed in 30 or 40 years, and he dips it right down in that container of that warm milk, and he hands it to us. <laughs> and so, um, Brother Danny takes it, and he takes a, a little sip, and uh, Velda, she took it, and then we go to offer it to Jeff. And Jeff says, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm on a diet. And I got to thinking about it. I was like, one little sip? So it gets to me. So I take the sip. And then they tell me they want to start taking pictures of me. So every time they take a picture, I had to take another sip. <laughs> so, again, it was just the hospitality of the, uh, the people. And I have to say that it really wasn't that bad, was it, Brother Danny? It was like milk warmed up in a, uh, in a microwave. Uh, so that was an experience. So very hos hospitable uh, people. We had a couple of times where I call these God winks. These are just moments where God just, you just know that it was God. Uh, on our way to the airport, to Atlanta, uh, we, we were getting to the airport and we, we parked at a nearby hotel and there was a shuttle bus that would take us to the airport. Well, the shuttle bus was kind of running behind and the way it worked is you get on the shuttle bus and it first takes you to the domestic part of the airport. You have to get off that shuttle and you have to get on another shuttle. Well, at this point, we are really cramped for time, and uh, and we're all, you know, we're getting nervous. Of course, we're trying to be spiritual and not, you know, just trusting the Lord. And so I'm thinking, now, how are we going to make it to our terminal in time if we have to go to the airport first, get on another uh, shuttle, and then continue on? Well, we're, we're driving, and the driver turns around and he says, all right, where are y'all going? And we told him where we were going. He said, well, I'm, I'm just going to take you all straight to the terminal. He said, I don't want you all uh, to be late for your uh, flight. So that was just one of those 
times where the Lord affirmed to us that it was, you know, He was right in the middle of the trip. And then on the way back home, we brought home a lot of stuff, and we we needed to take another suitcase. We had to pay for another suitcase. And if you've flown recently, you know, you have to pay an extra hundred dollars for an extra suitcase. And so we had we had a hundred dollars cash. Well, when we got to the airport in Romania. Uh, the girl tells uh, Brother Danny that they didn't take American dollars. That they only took the lei, which is the currency there in Romania, which we didn't have enough. So I told Brother Danny, I said, well, I've got a credit card. She said, yeah, we'll take the credit card. So I handed her my credit card. Well, she was gone for about five minutes. She came back. She said, well, the credit card machine's broken, so no charge. <laughs> so, again, that was just one of those, uh, those God winks where he was just, again, uh, just showing us his, his love and goodness uh, to us. Um, so it was a it was a special time. Uh, it was good to be able to see Jeff and Anna. You would be very proud of Jeff and Anna. They one of the things that sometimes happens to missionaries when they go to foreign countries is that, is they isolate themselves and they never get out into the culture, and so they end up becoming very ineffective, and they don't ever learn the language and they don't ever learn really the people. Well, that's not happening with Jeff and Anna. They're really getting out in the people, and I'm amazed at how well they are doing with the language. Now, they're pretty hard on themselves, but they're doing very, very good uh, with the language, so you would be very proud of, of them. And then uh, one final thing that was just a real blessing uh, for me was every evening, Brother Danny and I were able to, we, we had our own little bungalow, if you will. And we were able to just fellowship. And uh, I just want to thank Brother Danny for his heart for Romania missions. He truly has a heart for uh, the people of Romania. And so thank you, Brother, uh, Brother Danny, for your leadership and your love for the, for the people. And I was warned uh, by Miss Judy before we left. She said, now you need to take some earplugs because he snores really, really bad. <laughs> so I brought a big bag of earplugs. And, you know, I never one time heard him snore. The Lord gave us separate rooms. Uh, now, there was one time that he did snore, and that was on the way back home on the plane. And he really let out a loud snore. And it was so loud that it scared the girl next to him. Or No, it was a guy. He kind of jumped, kind of looked over at brother. So, anyways, it was a, it was a wonderful trip. And, uh, you know, I just want to, to say that the Great Commission begins right here. It begins right here at the church and in this community. Uh, I, I know I've said this before. Lord, help us if we go and we do missions way overseas, but we fail to do missions right here in our backyard. And so uh, I just want to end with a challenge to, to all of us. When I say us, myself included, there are lost people everywhere right here in Donaldsonville. And it was interesting because there in Romania... The religion is the orthodox religion. Here in America, one of the greatest mission fields is the South. Because everybody's saved. And it's because that's just kind of what we've always done. Our parents, our grandparents have always come to church. And so we just kind of go through the motions. And, and so religion can manifest itself in the orthodox faith, but it can also show itself right here. In, in the Baptist faith or the Methodist faith or whatever. And so just just know that our, our commission is clear. We, we've got to get the gospel out into our community. And, and just like in Romania, it's so important that we show the love of Christ. We show people uh, Jesus and His love for them.